my brothers and sisters in Islam, the first advice that is the most beneficial advice that is repeated so often and it is that which is needed by one and all is the advice to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also known as taqwallahi it is important for us to develop the consciousness of Allah if you would like to be saved from the calamities of this world and the hardship of the grave and the difficulties of the hereafter you need to be conscious of Allah you need to develop the fear of Allah with love what that means is when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much you will not want to displease him therefore you will not engage in that which he has prohibited so this is the development of taqwa taqwa is the fear of Allah coupled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you love Allah so much that you don't do things that will displease him remember this and you are always conscious of the fact that you are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today I wish to speak about cleanliness and you and I know when we say cleanliness the first thing that comes to our minds is to have clean clothes to look smart to look prim and to look prop however in Islam cleanliness is probably one of the deepest topics you can have because to clean your belief is probably the most important aspect of cleanliness where if a person associates partners with Allah if a person engages in any form of polytheism then their act of worship will be dirty it will be unclean it will be impure it will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we talk about cleanliness clean your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start with make sure when you do deeds you do them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly clean your relationship with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how do you do that by accepting him truly as a prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does it mean people might say well I believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I am saying believe in him truly because to say la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very easy but to adopt the method and the style and the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as best as possible is not so easy which means to be able to clean our acts of worship from innovation is actually a part of cleanliness from a different aspect people don't talk about this when they speak about cleanliness when they speak about purity these are pure deeds a pure deed is a deed that has in it two main qualities number one it is done for Allah number two it is done according to the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is something that is really important we definitely need to look into the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we definitely need to look into the relationship we have with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do we really consider him as a messenger if we did we would know that he came with a message and we would give importance to that message by learning it by putting it into practice by teaching it to others by considering it the gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us similarly when it comes to goodness we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to be good and to be kind to one another your relationships that you have with fellow human beings need to be clean cleanliness of the qualities that may overtake the heart sometimes because of the weakness of man or the tampering of the devil or a bit of both so you have someone who is doing well instead of congratulating him being happy for him the dirt of the heart makes us jealous the dirt of the heart makes us envious in a wrong way the dirt of the heart makes us deceive makes us cheat makes us backbite makes us do things that are considered filthy dirty and impure this is why if you take a look at the verses of purity 
in some of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of both the outward cleanliness as well as the cleanliness within. Listen to this verse of Surah Al-Baqarah. Verse number 222, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the verse by saying, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-tawabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Indeed, Allah loves those who constantly repent and He loves those who take pride in their cleanliness. He is talking about repentance and cleanliness in the same verse because repentance will clean you from inside and the other tahara that is being spoken about here is referring to that which is external. You clean the inside and you clean the outside. What is the point of a man or a woman who looks very smart, very clean, very prim and prop outwardly, but no one wants to mix with them. No one wants to talk to them because inside their character is is impure it is filthy it is not clean at all their conduct is that which is not exemplary no one wants to be near them because their tongue is dirty don't we use the language this man's tongue is dirty what does that mean it means they don't know how to speak they use vulgar words my brothers and sisters how many of us in our own houses and our homes we use dirty language then we call ourselves Muslim we call ourselves pure you want you make wudu for salah, you wash yourself to pray, you need to watch your mouth because even if you make wudu 10 times a day for 10 different prayers that you may have, the five compulsory and several other voluntary prayers, if your tongue is dirty, you still need to do more to be a good Muslim. Some people think if I read my salah, that's okay. I'm a good Muslim. I can swear my wife. I can beat people up. I can cheat. I can steal. I can deceive. For as long as I'm reading five salah, I'm a good Muslim. My brothers and sisters do not be deceived by shaitan. A good Muslim is he or she who has developed his character and conduct. Two types of relationships. The relationship you have with Allah and the relationship you have with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. The relationship you have with Allah is one and the relationship you have with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah, which includes animals, it includes birds, but more importantly, human beings. How is your relationship at home? My brothers and sisters control the tongue, clean it. Make sure that it is clean. It is part of tahara. It is part of purity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us both the tawbah that is being spoken about in this verse as well as the external cleanliness so that we can be clean inside out and a pleasure to interact with. When someone is clean inside out, that is the best person you can interact with most pleasing you are happy to mix with them to befriend them you will get goodness from them you will learn cleanliness from them and purity and you will enjoy a beautiful relationship may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who improve ourselves and this is why if we take a look at Sahih Muslim the hadith says At-tuhuru shatrul iman cleanliness is a large part of faith. Shatr sometimes refers to half. Half of it. Why? Why does Allah say this subhanahu wa ta'ala through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because it is far more than simple external cleanliness. If someone says, make sure you are clean. We think of one small aspect of cleanliness. Sometimes the mind is dirty. Sometimes the tongue is dirty. Sometimes the way we use our eyes is dirty. Sometimes our habits are dirty. This is what dirt refers to. When people say clean yourself, clean your mind. We have dirty thoughts. We look at people, we think the dirtiest things. Have a good thought. Clean your mind. Remember this. What's the point of washing so much with soap? But your mind needs to be washed with a different type of soap. You need to clean your mind. Do not have a dirty mind. When you see a person of the opposite sex, for example, think respectful thoughts. Do not think dirty, cheap thoughts because that 
is part of cleanliness when you have cleaned your mind. When you see people think of the best possible thing in Islam, it is called husnuddhan, to have a good perception of someone when they are doing something by the will of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've just given you an example of cleaning the mind. But wallahi, my brothers and sisters, even when we go to places, we need to clean our acts. We need to make sure we go to good places, halal, that which will earn the pleasure of Allah. I promise you, none of us knows in what condition we will die. Keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us death in such a way that we are in his obedience at that time. Amen. Imagine a person who sins, his act is dirty. May Allah not do such that we die during the worst of our days. Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamina awakhiraha wa khayra a'malina khawatimaha. Oh Allah, make the best of our days, the last days before we leave, and make the best of our deeds, the last deeds before you take us away. That is a beautiful dua. Also, my brothers and sisters, you know, when it comes to the five daily prayers, we make wudu, that is the ablution. There is a hadith where the Prophet wasallam speaks about, and this is muttafaqun alayhi, he speaks about a river. Do you see if there was a river that one of you would use to wash yourself five times a day? Do you think any dirt would be left on that person? If you are washing yourself from a flowing river with clean, pure water five times a day, do you think there will be any dirt left on that person? And the Prophet ﷺ heard the answer from the companions. They said, no, he will not be dirty. He will be clean. So the Prophet ﷺ says, that is the similarity of your five salah. Allah cleans you outside and inside through your five salah. How? Outside because you did the wudu. And inside, because your salah, if it is correct, salah itself will prohibit you from immorality and evil. So you are cleaned inside as well. If you fulfill your salah correctly, you will be forgiven by Allah. And you will be clean externally too. This is important. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu when he spoke about a certain companion, he told his companions that a man will come to you, a man will enter here who will be a man from Jannah. And this hadith, Rawahul Imam Ahmad, it is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. The Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum were wondering, this man will be a man from Jannah. Later on, when they found out the qualities of this man, they found out that he does not have hatred, ill feeling in his heart against any fellow believer. He has a clean heart. He is a person who makes sure that in his heart, he does not have dirt. This shows us that when you have a good heart, that heart which worships Allah alone, that heart which follows the example of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that heart which has a clean feeling towards the rest of us, then you deserve Jannatul Firdaus. You deserve paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this world and the next. Remember, if you would like the best of this world, you need to work hard. Similarly, if you want the best of the hereafter, you need to work very, very hard on your qualities. Just like a person takes great importance in the external cleanliness of himself and he makes sure he washes his hands after he eats. You know, when we eat, what do we do? We wash our hands. Imagine shaking someone's hand and the hand is oily and then you smell your hand and it is smelling of the latest Indian food. How will you feel? No matter how tasty that food was, for you it is dirty. Am I right? He cannot say, brother, smell your hand, that was beautiful biryani. He cannot say that. No matter how beautiful it was, it is considered dirty. But when you shake someone's hand and there is a lovely smell of a beautiful perfume, you smell your hand and you say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. You are happy, right? Subhanallah. So much so that there will come a time when you will know that that man, if you shake his hand, 
you will have some itr in your hand. Sometimes it happens, you already know. This shows that we give importance to the outward smell. We give importance to the outward looks, etc. Wallahi, there is a smell that emanates from within you. There are some people, they don't use itr, but their smell and scent is so beautiful that you love to be in their company. You love to be with them. And some people, they can use so much of itr, but you don't want to go near them because their mouth is foul. Their character is foul. We need to understand all these are aspects of cleanliness. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he speaks about washing the hand before you go to bed. If your hand is not clean, wash your hand and go to bed. Because if something happens to you while you are sleeping, you have none to blame besides yourself. One might ask what? You know, sometimes, obviously nowadays we are fortunate, you just switch on a tap and the water comes out. Still, we don't wash our hands. But at that time, it was tough. People had to go out walking a little bit to get a little bit of water to wash the hand. Perhaps the soap was not like what we have today. You press a button or you just put your hand under and it comes out because there is a sensor. No, the soap was different. They sometimes used to use a little bit of the mud in order to remove the oiliness from the hand. But if they left the oiliness of the food, there was a possibility that a rodent might bite the hand thinking that it is a, some form of food. So when you are bitten at night by a mouse or a rat, don't blame your, anyone besides yourself. The sunnah still applies. Wash yourself. So much so, there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu wherein he says that whoever sleeps in tahara, they clean themselves and then they sleep, Allah appoints an angel to stand beside that person and make istighfar for them for as long as they are sleeping. It's amazing. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. My brothers and sisters, try it out. Try it out. Clean yourself before you go to bed and see the difference that you will have, you will feel. See with what goodness you will get up for Salatul Fajr. You won't be lazy because you slept in a good condition. Sometimes when we go to sleep, we don't know what is our condition. We sleep late. We are busy sitting and watching this and that. And a lot of the times it's just people kicking a ball from pillar to post and we get excited and we miss our Salatul Fajr and we don't realize you may show an interest when it comes to the ball, but that interest cannot be greater than your interest in Salatul Fajr. It cannot be greater than your interest in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a lesson. Similarly, in the Quran, Allah tells us about cleanliness. Together with cleanliness, He talks about beauty. يا بني آدم خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد O children of Adam Adorn yourselves When you are going to places of prostration The masajid When you are going to fulfill the salah For the sake of Allah Clean yourself Adorn yourself Make sure you are dressed in a proper way You are coming to Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal Make sure you are dressed in a way that is acceptable. Those who take pride in their dressing before they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi they have a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is another level. It is a totally different level. You are convinced I'm going in front of Allah. Let me put something on which is proper, which is good, which is smart, which is clean, which is neat. It doesn't mean I'm just going to the masjid. I can go in my night clothing, it's fine. Maybe your salah will be done, but you don't have a special relationship with Allah. <coughs> when you have a special relationship, you will make sure that your dress code is absolutely beautiful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. When it comes to Salatul Jumu'ah, similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about, through the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person who bathes on the day of judgment and washes himself as much as he can and applies some perfume and goes early to the masjid without breaking sufuf which means they come so early when you come early to the masjid please my brothers you need to fulfill the first rows when you come early sit in the front 
in such a way that when someone comes later, they don't have to disturb you by moving your shoulders to walk in the front. So it is best for you, you come early and sit near the front. The hadith says, if you knew the reward of the first saf, the first row, people would actually fight for that saf. People would actually draw lots in order to get there. Sometimes people say, no, I came early, but never mind, leave that saf for someone else. No, go, you will have a reward. Go and you will have a reward. So the Prophet ﷺ says, if a person bathes on the Friday and they clean themselves as much as they can, and they have applied a good perfume, and they come early to the masjid, and they read whatever salah that Allah has made easy for them, that which Allah has prescribed, and when the Imam comes out, they are quiet, they listen carefully to what has been said, Allah forgives all their minor sins between that Jumu'ah and the previous Jumu'ah. <coughs> Subhanallah. All your minor sins, as you are walking out, you are clean. What happened? Just by virtue of doing what I said now. Subhanallah. That hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. We need to understand the power of these words. Take pride in coming early for Jumu'ah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah, may Allah make it easy. Try a few times, see how you feel and you will want more and more. We are so fortunate in a country like this. Wallahi, there are some of the masajid around us, so many, and they are of a very high standard and they are absolutely clean and so beautiful. Wallahi, you will be asked on the day of judgment. There was a masjid down the road. Why did you not go there? Wallahi. In other places, people are crying for a masjid. We have it, air conditioned, better carpet than my own house, better facility than my own home. But I did not go there. Why? Develop your link with Allah. My brothers, my sisters, we can do better. This is the house of Allah. Go, you will find the peace that you are searching for. Wallahi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. My brothers, my sisters, it is important for us to know that while we are talking about cleanliness and while we are talking about the issue of purity, we need to also purify the environment that we are living in. We need to make sure that we do not litter the place because that is also a part of cleanliness. Very simple act. When you are eating something, don't spit it out on the street. When you are eating or drinking something from a packaging, take a moment to put that empty packaging into the right disposing place. Whether it is a bin or whether it is a place that is specialized for the item it is. Sometimes recycled plastic goes into that particular compartment. Make sure you take a moment to protect the environment. Similarly, when it comes to the water and the oceans that Allah has blessed you with, make sure you do not contaminate it with dirt. Make sure that you do not urinate in a place that you are not supposed to be urinating in. Make sure that you do not abuse the environment in such a way that other people will be disturbed by your actions. This is why there is a curse that Rasulullah has made mention of upon a person who relieves himself under the shade of a tree or in the path of the people. It is part of cleanliness. Learn. You want to use the toilet? Do it properly. Clean properly. Leave the loo in a condition that you would like to see it when you enter. Remember that. It is a golden rule. When you enter the loo, the difficulty with a lot of us we think, okay, I just use the toilet. When I walk out, never mind, someone will clean it. No, you clean and make sure you leave it in a condition better than when you walked in, or at least the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. This is a very important factor that many people take for granted. Similarly, when you are walking on the path, not only you and your mess, but if other people have made a mess, it is the goodness of yourself as a Muslim to pick up and to clean it if possible. If you have to, no problem. While you are walking on the street, if you see a rock 
or an object someone else dropped it it came there somehow you were not the person who put it there but you know this thing is harmful for the people maybe they will be hurt or maybe they will be offended by the smell or maybe they might hurt themselves or harm their vehicles for you to be able to remove the harm from the road of the people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says it is a sadaqa it is actually such a big charity this is mentioned in al adab al mufrad by imam bukhari rahmatullahi alayh he says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks about the levels of iman there are so many levels of iman one of them is when you are so concerned about the others that you clean and remove the harmful object from the road of the people thinking that inshallah I will be rewarded because I will be saving so many other people from this harm. Similarly, as a result of that common logic is you on your path will probably have a beautiful path because someone else would have cleaned that path before you. So if we make that a trend, we will benefit because other people will have cleaned the road because of us. And we will have cleaned the road so that others can benefit. This is called al-mujtama. This is called the community, the society, the nation. This is where we benefit one another from this goodness and cleanliness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really and truly grant us cleanliness inside and out and help us to clean the environment in such a way that it becomes pleasant to be living around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم